Welcome to the second in our series of videos about how to set up your XMC1. In this video, we're going to show you how to configure your XMC1 to work with your loudspeakers. You'll need a few things before we get started. You'll need a tape measure to measure the distance between your listening position and each of your speakers. You'll also need some sort of sound level or SPL meter for calibrating your speaker levels. For now, any sound level meter will do, even a sound level app on your smartphone. Let's begin by turning on the XMC1. Once the main power is on, you can use either your remote control or the buttons on the front panel to operate the XMC1. Once your XMC1 is on, you'll see three rows of information displayed on the front panel OLED display. This is the default information display and shows you everything you need to know about your signal source and how the XMC1 is handling it. The first row shows the name of the input you have selected, the audio mode your XMC1 is currently using, and the current volume setting. The second row shows details about the audio portion of the input signal, the input it's coming from, this could be different than where the video is coming from, the type of audio signal coming in, and the bit rate of the incoming signal. The third row shows details about the video portion of the incoming signal, the input it's coming from, the picture's resolution, and the bit depth of the video. If your TV or monitor is on, you can also get this information to pop up on the on-screen display or OSD for a few seconds by pressing the info button. Pressing the menu button on either the front panel or on your remote will take you into the menu system. In the menu, the center row is where we'll focus our attention. The rows above and below the center row are basically there for context, so you can see where you are and where you'll end up if you press the up or down arrows. Incidentally, the little triangular arrows around the edges show you that you can move in those directions. To get into a particular menu item, use the up and down arrows to move the list until the item you want is in the center row of the display. Then use the right arrow key to enter it. To back up one level, use the left arrow button. You can also exit the entire menu by pressing the menu button at any time. The XMC1 automatically saves any changes you make on each screen when you leave it, regardless of how you choose to exit. We're going to show you how to configure your XMC1 so it knows about your speakers. In this video, we'll be setting up preset 1. You set up preset 2 exactly in the same way, and the configuration settings in each are totally independent. Since the settings we'll be configuring today are in the setup menu, press the menu button to get into the menu. Use the up and down arrows to select setup, then press the right arrow button to enter the setup menu. The presets, where you configure things about your system configuration and your speakers, are located in the Speakers section of the Setup menu, so select the Speakers menu. Once you select Speakers, you will be able to select Preset 1, 2, or Dirac. At this point, please select Preset 1 and we'll get started. The first thing we're going to set for each of our speakers is size. In a home theater, full-range speakers that can handle the entire audio frequency range are referred to as large, and those that cannot handle low bass are referred to as small. Any speaker that a manufacturer calls a satellite, or that may specifically say to be used with a sub, should always be considered small. At this point, you should examine your speakers and determine whether each is small or large. If you're not sure, it's always safer to go with small, and you can always go back and change it later. By default, the XMC1 will assume all of your speakers are small and pick the default crossover point of 80 Hz for each speaker. Because you should always set both speakers in a group to be the same size, front, surround, or backs, you'll only have to enter one setting for each of those groups. Once you've decided whether each of your speakers is large or small, let's go into the size menu and enter that information for each group of speakers. Once you get into the menu, you'll notice that some of the speaker groups have extra options besides large or small. Since some people don't have a center speaker, you can set that to large, small, or none. And since there are several different ways people do surround sound, there are several options for how to set your surrounds and back channels. You can pick large, small, or none for your surrounds. And for your back speakers, you can pick one, two, large, small, or none. 
If you have a 5.1 channel system, then you must connect your surrounds to the surround outputs and configure your backs to none. Even if your surrounds are located in the back of your room, they are still considered to be surrounds and you must configure them accordingly. If you have a stereo system with a subwoofer or even just a stereo system, be sure to set the size of the speakers you don't have to none. The XMC1 supports either a single subwoofer or fully independent stereo subwoofers, so there are several options for how you can configure your subwoofer or subwoofers. If you have one sub, then choose mono. If you have two subwoofers, you'll get to choose between two options. If you pick stereo, you'll have a standard 5.2 or 7.2 configuration, where one sub handles the right side and the other handles the left. This setting will be best for most people. The other option, dual mono, is for special situations. It allows each sub to be configured separately, but then routes a single mono-based signal to both. There is also a low pass filter for the sub, and in this menu you can configure the slope on that crossover to be gradual or sharp, gradual being 12 dB per octave, or sharp being 24 dB per octave. Most people prefer the sharper slope, which is the default setting on the XMC1, so we will not change that for now. Once you've set the size for all your speakers, exit back up to the preset one menu. For the next few settings, we're going to have to decide on our listening position, which is simply the place where you usually sit and listen to movies or music. If you listen by yourself, this would be the spot where the center of your head rests when you're sitting in your favorite chair. If you entertain groups, then pick a single spot where the middle of the group would be. First, we need to simply take a tape measure and measure the distance between our listening position and each speaker, and write down all of the distances. Try and be as accurate as possible. For the sub, just measure the distance to the closest side. Once you've got these measurements, simply go into the distance menu and enter them. When you're done, exit back out to the preset one menu. Now, we're going to set the speaker levels. It is important that all of your speakers play each sound at the correct level so they can accurately portray the differences in level our brains use to help locate each sound in space. Let's go into the levels menu where you will see a list of all your speakers with a level value next to each. Since we haven't configured them yet, all the speakers should be set to the default level or zero dB. We're going to turn on the XMC1's precision test tone generator and use it to play a calibrated tone through each of our speakers. 75 dB SPL is a widely accepted industry standard for calibrating speakers and is also Dolby standard test level, so that's what we'll be using. At this point, if you haven't already, you should turn on your SPL meter and place it at your primary listening position. If you have the option, set the meter to C weighting if you don't, then don't worry about it. Now, select the test tone generator and change the setting from off to 75 dB SPL or medium. At this point, you should hear a somewhat loud hiss coming from one of your speakers. If you haven't done any of this before, the default speaker would be the left front channel. We'll be adjusting each speaker to play at a level of 75 dB SPL the test tone signal generator in the XMC1 will continue to run at the same level as we go from speaker to speaker. When we're all done, you can turn it off manually, or it will shut off by itself when you exit the levels menu. Now move into the actual settings screen for your left front speaker, and use the up and down arrows to change the level setting until your SPL meter reads 75 dB SPL. Simply repeat this for each speaker you have making sure that each is set to 75 dB SPL. Once you've gotten the levels on all your speakers set correctly, you can exit the levels menu. The test tone generator will switch off automatically when you exit the menu. Now, you can change the name of the preset we've just configured. To do that, go into the name menu and pick a new name, using the left, right, up, and down arrows to change each letter. The default name for preset one is movie, and we're fine with that, so we're going to just leave it. Congratulations, you've just configured a preset in your XMC1. In the next video in this series, we'll tell you how to configure your inputs for absolute optimum performance, including how to assign the preset that you've just created to each input.